What's going on, America? This is Kevin in Kevin's Corner. And you know, there's those rare moments in time where you watch something and you get so frustrated, you just got to stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you're used to. You got to stop and pull over and address it. Now, President Trump said some things today during an immigration reform meeting where some people tried to come in and shove some garbage in the president's face for him to sign knowing that it wouldn't meet the criteria of true immigration reform. You know, they're trying to slide some garbage in there with um, giving everybody amnesty and basically not funding the wall that's needed and being okay with chain immigration, which is crazy. See, here's my thing. If I move to Canada and I get over there and say, uh, Mr. Canadian people, I miss my parents. I miss my friends and my family. And they would say, OK, I tell you what, how about you move back to the U.S. and you can be with your friends and family going back, going back to Ohio, spend all the time you want with them. All right. But immigration doesn't work that way. See, you choose to go somewhere. It's not you and your peeps, you and your family member. It's you. And so the stuff that they're trying to slide to the president is very frustrating to him and to a lot of Americans. So for the first time. I will give some criticism concerning a response from the president. But then before all the snowflakes and the liberals get all excited and they palate wet and they slobbing at the mouth. OK, um, I'm going to break it down so the simple mind can understand what's really going on. Now, um, our president, we know that he's a guy from Queens. He says what he says. And sometimes I don't think that. He thinks outside of his normal personality. See, when you're talking amongst people who love you, you can say things and they're not going to judge you. They're not going to uh, uh, turn on you because they see your true character. They're like, yo, that's my boy. I know he ain't mean nothing by it. But when you are dining and chilling with the enemy, you have to be consciously aware of their interpretation of what you're saying and how they will try to use what you're saying against you. And so today in the meeting, apparently something went down to where President Trump made some comments about why do we get a lot of immigrants from these crap hole, and he didn't say crap hole, of course, but these crap hole countries. Why can't we get people like maybe from Norway? And of course, the liberal media just goes crazy. This further confirms that he's a racist. Listen to him. He said Norway. He's trying to make America white again. And that's what his real motive is. You can smell the racism from here. They are going in today on CNN, NS or NBC. What is it? MSNBC. All, of course, liberal stations. Now. Was that a smart thing to say? Uh, probably not. For the simple fact, even though the comment, and I'm going to break it down in a second, was not racist, but it was not a wise comment to make concerning the narrative that the left is trying to push and considering you're sitting amongst friends and foes. And for the most part, most of them were probably foes, even the ones that claim they friends. But nonetheless, you have to be more conscious of how comfortable you get and the things that you say that somebody could take and use it against you and also take it out of context. So let's break it down for a second. All right. When he said what he said, did that mean that he was making a racist, racist comment? Look at the context and what they're talking about. They're talking about immigration. Now, there's multiple facets in immigration. You got a legal immigration that we have to deal with. People don't want to give them amnesty and just say, man, yeah, y'all broke the law, but come on in. You can stay anyway. Then you have the dreamers who are here by none of their fault, but nonetheless, they're here and they're quite, they're still really illegal, which I think a fair way of dealing with them is not to just say, okay, every one of y'all have amnesty, but at the same time, case by case and develop a criteria and say, look, if you're here, you're productive, you're working, you're involved, cool. You can work towards citizenship, but if you just chilling, if you up in here cooling, if you just milking the system, if I come to your crib at three in the afternoon on a summer day 
and you just laying up under the fan like, ay, 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 it's so hot, and ain't trying to get a job, you ain't got no screen door, you ain't got no stopper for your tub, you got to use a rag, you know, you got all this stuff going on, and ain't even trying to better your situation, then you might need to go. So instead of just saying, just because you're a dreamer, you automatically good. I would say, look at the dreamers, and if they're productive, if they don't have any record, fine, cool, you can come in and stay. But then you got chain migration, which is just crazy, which I don't even know how people with a straight face suggest that people who have broken the law or came here illegally should just be able to say, you know what, now that I'm here, I'm bringing my whole crew. That's crazy. But you also have to look at how immigration affects our culture, okay, affects our economy. It affects um, our crime rate. It affects a lot of areas of America. You're talking about people coming from another country, and a lot of times people come from countries that are countries they don't want to live in. I mean, let's be real. As a black person, I know that most black people that get two nickels to rub together end up leaving the hood and then talk about some, yeah, I'm just keeping it real. Nah, you ain't keeping it real. Even black people know if they hit the lotto, you can't still live in the Kimmo Brooks. Y'all know nothing about that unless you're from the Ohio area. You can't still live in Westwood, all of the places where you know that you might be leaving your little mansion that you built in the ghetto, talking about I'm keeping it real. And as you going out the front gate, they sneaking in the back gate. So even black people who try to talk about some man, if I ever get rich, I'm going to keep it real. Yeah, you'll keep it real. All right. Real out to the uh, suburbs somewhere so you can keep your goods. So it is common for people to say, if I'm living in a mess, I want to go somewhere else and live. But what if the place you're going to, you are not going to be more productive to that environment, but instead you're going to bring some baggage that is going to impact that environment in a negative way. Well, it's also fair to say the people in that environment might say, well, hold up, man. Don't bring your baggage here. If you're going to come, we want to make sure that you're going to come and add to the community, not bring it down. You can't come here and be bumping your music all hours of the night while I'm trying to sleep. You can't come here and bring a whole bunch of dogs and don't keep them on no leash. You know, back in the day where I grew up, dogs didn't have no leashes. We just let them go. It wasn't no, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and feed my dog uh, dog food and arms. Nah, you ate what we ate. Talking about some, yeah, I'm taking the dog to the vet. Ain't no vet. No, you go outside and you eat some grass, okay? Leash, we don't need no leash. Shoot, let that dog roam the neighborhood. And if people get bit, they just got bit. Came home, rub some iodine on it, mom kiss you on it, now go outside and play and stay away from that dog. So if you think that you're going to take certain behaviors like that to another environment and the people going to be okay with it, you got another thing coming. And unfortunately, the environment that people come from oftentimes impacts their behavior, their way of thinking, a lot of stuff, okay? So when Trump said, why do we always have to except immigrants from crap holes, it's not saying that just because these immigrants are black uh, or from certain places of Africa or just because these immigrants are from Mexico, uh, just because these immigrants are from Haiti, then just based off of their race, we don't want them here, okay? Because see, if it was, I don't like people that are black or Mexican or whatever, then the comment would have been like, how about we start getting rid of the black and the Mexicans and all of the other Americans of color? Let's get rid of them and send them back to those other places because we don't want them here. So his comment had nothing to do with race, but instead geographical and economical location. So let's let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's get out of the emotion. See. All right. Let's look at this. I got a list right here of the top 12 countries to live in. OK, so when he said what he said, he made a comparison, basically saying, why do we have to take people from countries that really ain't bringing nothing to the country that's going to benefit us economically, socially or whatever? But instead, why can't we? And he used an extreme reference, a place like Norway. OK, now 
the first thing the mind goes to when you're looking for reasons to hate Trump is, you know what? He's saying Norway because the Norwegians are all white and they have blonde hair and blue eyes. And that just goes to prove that he's Hitler. Hell Hitler. Immediately. But instead, let's look at some facts and get the emotions out of it. Because guess what? There aren't a lot of people leaving their country to run to Haiti. There's not a lot of people leaving their country to run to Mexico. You don't see a lot of Americans, black, white, not even real Mexicans are running back over into Mexico. They're coming to America because their country is messed up. So they go on, let's go to a better place. But oftentimes they don't bring anything to the country that is going to make our culture, make our economy run better. Oftentimes that puts a burden on our economy. Not only that, a lot of times they're here illegal, which breaks the law. And I don't see why we even argue in that. But anyway, let's go back to my list. Number 12, Hong Kong. Number 11, the U.S. Number 10, Canada. Number 9, Iceland. Number 8, Ireland. Number 7, Netherlands. Number 6, Singapore. Number 5, Denmark. Number 4, Germany. Number 3 is Switzerland. Number 2, Australia. And guess what the number one place that is voted for people to live in is Norway. So Trump was referencing a country that appears to have it together. The life expectancy is longer in Norway. Their healthcare system works. People are happy. They're walking around going, I'm glad to be Norwegian. Glad to be here. Okay. You don't see Norwegians leaving their area because the place is a mess. They're happy to be there. So I'm sure if they're happy to be there, for them to come somewhere else, they're going, really, I had no reason to leave my country, but I'm coming to America because of a reason. I either am coming for a job, I'm coming to impact, I'm coming because I'm a scientist, I'm coming to bring something to add to the culture or the economy, all right? So for people to immediately go straight to racism, immediately, it means he's racist. He wants an all white society. If that is the case, then he would have included the already mixed culture that's here in America legally and as American citizens. He would have said, hey, man, forget just bringing black and Mexican people from other countries. We got too many of them here already. Let's get rid of them. Send them back over there. He's simply talking about the economic status of these areas and how the baggage that they may bring here, it doesn't take America to another level. It can impact us in a negative way. So he just made a contrast. And it happened to be Norway based off of the stats that shows that Norway is the number one place to live. But of course, the liberal media is all about racism because that's what they do. They assign motive that really isn't motive. See, and that's what Trump made his mistake. He forgets that everybody's sitting back going, how can I trip him up? How can I catch him just being human and just talking and joking? See, he got too relaxed. He thought they was his friends. <laughs> Man, this is why we always got to get places from crap holes. Why can't we get somebody from like what, Norway or something? You know, maybe even in a joking manner, but you know, they like, <laughs> yeah, let me write that down. I'm taking it straight to CNN. Yeah. And that's where he made his mistake. He needs to always be thinking not how his base is going to interpret it, because we we see it. We, I, mean, I don't see what the problem is. But I'm talking about those haters, those ones that's sitting back going, oh, please say something that we can misinterpret or assign an evil motive to. That's what we really want to do. So people, don't lose your crap like CNN and MSNBC and the rest of the liberals. Yes, was it a unwise joke or statement that he made amongst them? Yes based on the fact that they're pushing a false narrative and they want to hate him and get him out of there anyway. But was it racist? See, and that's where it gets tricky. And that's what makes everybody mad when it comes to talking about complicated issues because you can't make comments and people don't say, oh, what you mean by that? You meant, uh, are you racist? That's what you mean? You know, the angry person. Ain't nobody worse than an angry person. Oh man, can I get you some watermelon? Oh what? All black people eat watermelon now? No, I just thought maybe you can, never mind, you know. Hey, you want some more barbecue? Oh, all black people like barbecue? 
You racist, see? Uh-huh. Hey, you want to play some basketball? Oh, <laughs> just because I'm black, I'm supposed to be able to hoop, right? Mm-hmm. I know what this is. Nobody wants to be around somebody who everything is said, it always comes back to racist because you can't have a logical conversation. I understand the context of his statement. None of those countries was on the top 12. None of them that he made the comment about. But guess what was number one? Norway. So they're doing something right. And that's what he would say. Did I have to see? It took me all of that time, 15 minutes to break down something and, 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 and squash a lot of the garbage narratives that are coming out concerning this. Anyway, you've been listening to Kevin at Kevin's Corner. Been talking so long that it's starting to get blurry. Let's see if I can clear that up. Okay. Sometime these phones, man, are in and out. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening to Kevin at Kevin's Corner. If you like what you heard and if you're in Kevin's Corner, please subscribe. Uh, also, click like. And, you know, I, I think sometimes YouTube, they, they, they plan funny games, man. People who were subscribed, or they don't even get some of the... the the um the notifications i don't know what's going on but anyway just keep looking keep sharing we got to get the word out and combat all of this garbage that's going on if you want to donate to kevin's corner feel free there are links in the bottom uh just click the link and you'll be able to donate to kevin's corner and we'll keep these videos going god bless you and i'll see you next time <sighs> make me so mad if america keep going the way it's going i'm gonna be moving to norway